Die Hard with a Vengeance was released in 1995 and it's directed by John McTiernan and it sees Bruce Willis reprising his role as John McClane for a third instalment of the Die Hard franchise. This film also stars Samuel L. Jackson and Jeremy Irons. In Die Hard with a Vengeance, we see John McClane partnered up with a pro-black Harlem shopkeeper called Zeus Carver, played by Samuel L. Jackson, and they take on a mysterious terrorist called Simon in a very deadly game of Simon Says. Simon has revealed that he's planted numerous bombs across the city of New York and it is up to McClane and Zeus to actually find these bombs and to find Simon in the process also. Die Hard with a Vengeance is the first Die Hard film not to be based upon some source material. Die Hard 1 was based upon a novel, Nothing Lasts Forever, by Roderick Thorpe. Die Hard 2, Die Harder, was based upon a novel, 58 Minutes. Die Hard 4.0 was based upon a news article, Farewell to Arms. So this Die Hard with a Vengeance is based upon an original story. As always guys, please keep on supporting that channel. Hit that subscribe button so you can follow me on this channel. Hit that alarm bell as well so you can get notifications from me when my video is going to be uploaded and also give this video a like as well. Die Hard with a Vengeance marks a different change in the franchise, which is good because it has to be different. You can't keep giving us the same thing that you gave us in the previous two Die Hard films, otherwise it gets tedious and boring. So in this Die Hard film, it is not set at Christmas time. Bonnie Bedella, who played McLean's wife, is not involved in the narrative of this film. We see that the action has switched from a less claustrophobic place to an airport and a building, is now set place within New York City, which is a character within itself. And McLean is partnered up with a sidekick, played by Samuel Jackson. But more importantly than that, McLean's co-workers, are also involved within the storyline and within the action sequences as well. Die Hard 2 divided critics. Some people loved it, some people hated it. But with John McTiernan on board, he reclaimed a lot of the elements that was missing from the second film. The cat and mouse element, the sly humour, the tension. John McTiernan brought Die Hard back with a bang, giving us the funniest of the Die Hard installments and the highest grossing film of 1995. Whilst Die Hard with a Vengeance is nowhere near as good as the first film, it is certainly streets ahead of the second film. What makes Die Hard with a Vengeance so entertaining is the chemistry between Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis. These two make a formidable combination. Samuel L. Jackson steals every scene that he's in as Zeus. And Bruce Willis personally recommended Samuel L. Jackson for the role. And the chemistry between Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis is just as good, if not equally as good, as the chemistry that Samuel L. Jackson had with John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. In the opening sequence, we see McLean asked by Simon to go to Harlem with a sandwich board sign over him, wearing a sign that says a racial slur on it. And we see that some of the homies want to kill McLean because they see what he's wearing. Zeus rescues McLean, and then after Simon being disappointed that McLean wasn't killed, he partners McLean up with Zeus. It takes Die Hard in a different direction because the banter between the two of them is highlighting the racial differences between the two. And it makes for some very, very entertaining dialogue, some brilliant performances between the two, and it pushes Die Hard with a vengeance into that action comedy genre. Their banter and the pairing up with them two almost reminds me of the classic, The Defiant Ones. And I don't mean the film with Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine, I'm talking about the film with Sidney Poitier and Tony Curtis, about two convicts who are paired together and they bicker about their racial differences along the way as they escape. And Samuel L. Jackson was the high point for me for this film. And what was interesting was, Lawrence Fishburne was meant to play the role of Zeus, but he turned it down. And he would take on a similar type theme a similar type film with him being paired up with a white person and highlighting their racial differences in the 1996 film Fled. And that film was almost like The Defiant Ones. Jeremy Irons as Simon. Jeremy Irons had his work cut out for him because here's a spoiler if you haven't seen Die With The Vengeance. Simon is the brother of Hans Gruber, played by the late great Alan Rickman. And anybody has their work cut out for them when they're following on from one of the greatest diehard villains and also one of the greatest villains in movie history. But Jeremy Irons did well. Nowhere near as good as Alan Rickman, but he made it his own and was charismatic in parts as well. McLean and Simon never get to see one another until the last act of the film, which was pretty much how it was in Die Hard 1. Die Hard with a Vengeance takes on the same type of narrative that the first Die Hard film did, which was that Terrorism is used as a smokescreen because the real motive is that Simon wishes to rob the New York Federal Reserve of $140 billion worth of gold. 
John McTiernan stepped back into the director's chair, but he also did something very, very special and what I thought was very, very clever. Anthony Peck, who played McLean's colleague Ricky, who gets shot in the New York and Federal Reserve vault sequence, you think he's just there as a colleague and he's just there as someone has to get killed, but he has a more significant role. When McLean is in a truck and he's told by the FBI about who Simon really is. The name Gruber mean anything to you, Lieutenant? It rings a bell, yeah. L.A. What? That thing in the building in L.A. You think that, okay, he's familiar with McLean's track record because they worked with him before, but what was clever was the fact that Anthony Peck actually starred in the very first Die Hard film. As Reginald Vell Johnson's character, Al Powell, he was one of his colleagues in the film. But he was actually credited as Young Cop. And in this film, he's credited as Ricky. So I thought that was a very, very clever nod to the first Die Hard film. Die Hard with a Vengeance is a more slow burner film. It is not as fast paced as Die Hard 2. But Die Hard with a Vengeance has some superb action sequences. So John McTiernan, one of the best action directors out there, has orchestrated some brilliant set pieces from the opening sequence of the explosion of Bomb Teller to the taxi chase through New York, where McLean has to go and find a bomb that's been put on a train, the brilliant shootout in the elevator, when McLean and Zeus have to abseil from a bridge to a boat, I thought that was a brilliant sequence and one of the best stunts that's out there. And also McLean's colleagues, they are also involved within the narrative of this film. When Simon has revealed that he has placed a bomb in a school that is set to detonate at 3.15 p.m., it is up to his colleagues to actually search for the bomb, whilst McLean and Zeus have to embark on all of these challenges and tasks that Simon has set for them. So I thought that was a very, very good way to take the Die Hard narrative in a different direction. I do have a few small gripes about Die Hard with a Vengeance. Audibly, the gunshots and the explosions for Die Hard with a Vengeance aren't as loud as they were in the previous two installments. In fact, the gun that McLean has, it almost sounds like a cap gun. The finale between he and Simon, I felt that was a bit lacklustre. It could have been done better, is that there is actually an alternative ending for Die Hard with a Vengeance. You can look it up on YouTube, and I thought that would have been a better ending to have. Because we see McLean, who's been fired from the NYPD, he's been humiliated, he tracks Simon down to Germany, and he plays him at his own game of McLean says, and McLean takes out a rocket launcher, puts it on the desk, files off the um, site so you can't see which way the rocket launcher is facing and McLean teases Simon with his own form of riddles. And I thought that would have been good because if you're going to take Die Hard in a direction, take McLean in a different direction. Give us a McLean that we haven't seen before, someone who is just as vicious as his opponent and you're playing him at his own game and I thought that would have been good and the stakes would have been raised. Die Hard with a Vengeance is still an entertaining watch. The highest grossing film of 1995, but it did suffer as a fact that it was released at the same year of the 1995 Oklahoma bombing. And that did put a damper on it. But it is still one of the more better installments of the franchise, and it did something that a three call usually doesn't do. It does a film that is just as entertaining and just as good as its two previous installments. It didn't go the way of Beverly Hills Cop 3. No, it went the way of Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, where you have two good installments and you got one that's just as good. So I'll give this one a very, very strong 9 out of 10. So, that's my review. As always, guys, thank you for supporting this channel. Keep on supporting because there's going to be more content coming. So you hit that subscribe button so you can follow this channel. Hit that alarm bell as well so you can get notifications from me when my video is going to be uploaded. Give this video a like as well. That's what's going to help the video get noticed. Leave your comment in the comment section with what is your favourite scene from Die Hard with a Vengeance? What's your favourite Die Hard film? Leave your comment in the comment section and you best believe I will see you on the next film review. Take care. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker.